red chili braised chilorio tacos from the state of Sinaloa. Welcome back to my kitchen. The next page in our taco manual is Chilorio. Maybe something you haven't heard of before, but it is very common. It is a very common dish in the northern part of Mexico, especially in the state of Sinaloa. And when I have had it there, I have found it in the markets as a sort of preserved pork dish. So just imagine this. It's like a pulled pork kind of thing that is cooked with chilies and some acid, salt, and a fair amount of fat. And then when all of that gets cooked together, it forms this sort of shredded mixture that can actually be preserved at room temperature for quite some time. Now, that's not the way that people do it so much these days because people just love the flavor of this red chili pulled pork and they make it to serve right away. That's the version that I'm going to show you how to work with today. So let's talk about the pork first. When you're making a small amount of this, it can be a whole hog kind of thing, but we're going to start with the pork shoulder roast, the boneless pork shoulder roast. And I have a pound and a half of it here, and I'm going to cut it into uh, one inch pieces. Now, I'm going to tell you that this size matters when it comes to the size of these pieces here because of the fact that it will uh, change the cooking time if you're working with large pieces. Um, I'm going to cut this into the one inch pieces and then we're going to put them all into a pan to cook. Now there's several different ways to cook the pork here. And it is important that you know that. You have alternatives. I'm going to show you the version that goes on the stove top. Easiest by far. You put some liquid and the seasonings in with the pork and then you let it cook at a gentle simmer for about an hour and a half. That's the version I'm going to show you, but it's not the only version you can do. If you have an uh, electric pressure cooker like an instant pot, you can do it in there in 40 minutes instead of an hour and a half on the stovetop. Or if you like the low and slow, you can do this in your slow cooker. In the recipe that I'm gonna give you, all the directions are there. Okay, so I've got this now cut up into the one inch pieces. And I'm gonna put those guys into this large pot over here. You want a fairly good sized pot so that when it is simmering, it's all simmering very evenly. That's enough to cover about a one inch layer on the bottom of this. I'm going to take a break for a second and go wash my hands. Now on to the seasonings. This is a red chili braise. And the nice thing is that this long, slow cooking time, whether you're on the stove top or slow cooker or pressure cooker, um, is long enough that you don't have to jump through all the hoops that you do when making a red chili sauce, like toasting and soaking the chili. So this one is going to be seasoned with ancho chiles. Of course, you have to open them up like that, let the seeds fall out. You're gonna pull off the stem end of it like that. And then I just tear these chilies into large pieces and I'm going to put them straight into a blender jar. Obviously not something you see me do very often because I'm oftentimes making moles or red chili sauces that require me to toast and soak the chilies here. So in those guys go, usually you'll see me doing a toasting of garlic to take away its pungency. But again, this long, slow cooking is going to really tame that raw garlic flavor. So I'm going to put four cloves of garlic directly in here. We have now um, a cup of orange juice. You don't see this in too many recipes for chilodio, but I collected a cookbook when I was up in Sinaloa 
I'm gonna say like 30 or 40 years ago, and it had a special chilorio recipe that called for orange juice. I tried it and loved it, so it has been part of my repertoire for a long time now. So that will go in here. A couple of tablespoons of vinegar. I think an apple cider vinegar works really good here because it's got a real pungency to it. And then I've got uh, spices that are gonna go typical northern spices, a little bit bit of cumin and a little bit of black pepper here, actually quite a bit of black pepper there. And I'm going to put them into the molcajete and crush them. You may be working with already ground spices, so you'll just measure those guys out. But I just love the uh, aroma of fresh ground spices, so I will always do that grinding right before using. Just take a second to Smell this, it smells so, so good. Uh, fresh ground cumin is nothing like pre-ground cumin, which has a much, I'm gonna say funkier kind of aroma to it. Our last spice or herb in this case, that's gonna go in here is Mexican oregano. I'm gonna put about a teaspoon in there. Because you can see here that it has um, the whole uh, flower buds and it's got a little of the sticks that was from the collection of it in there. Um, and that's the way it's sold in the Mexican market. You have to pulverize it, but it's usually a very simple process of just letting it fall from your palms as you rub your palms together like that. So we got all of that in there now. And I'm going to put in some salt. This is a measured amount of salt, just simply because we are working with a, a braised thing going on in here. And I'm gonna start with my uh, tablespoon, excuse my teaspoon and a half of salt. And we can come back and season this later on to get the final seasonings just right. Top goes on. And we're going to make an absolutely smooth puree out of these seasonings. Now, because I'm using a high-speed blender for this, I don't really have to strain this. But if you're using a regular blender, then you're going to need to press it through a medium mesh sieve to get out any stray seeds or little bits of skin that didn't get completely uh, pulverized in this blending process. So we're going to put all of this now over the meat. And because this is going to be a stovetop braise, I'm going to add a little bit of water to it because there will be more evaporation. If you're doing it in a slow cooker or if you're doing it in an electric pressure cooker, then you don't add the water to it. That's really the only difference in this. Okay. So mix all of that up, dilute it with a half cup of water, turn on the fire here and adjust it to a kind of medium low. You want a very small amount of movement and we're going to let this braise for about an hour and a half until that meat is fall apart tender. This stuff is simmering away. I already checked the meat to make sure that it was completely tender. I'm gonna take the meat out of here, leaving behind the juice. Now, during stovetop simmering like this, really you have to keep an eye on it because if it starts to dry out and there's not much braising liquid there or simmering liquid, you have to add a little bit more water. So you'll need to keep an eye on it. It's only an hour and a half if you're making other things in the kitchen, perhaps you could do that. Um, you want about a half a cup of sort of that thickish braising liquid uh, left in the pan. I'm gonna let this cool for just a minute and then come back to it and shred it. And that'll give me a chance to also measure how much of this liquid I have here. Okay, I am using the technique for shredding this pork of a gloved hand because that's the easiest and fastest way to do it. You might like to take a couple of forks held back to back and pull the meat apart. It just takes me a lot longer to do it that way. Now our next step here with this meat is 
to brown it. And this is such an important part. When I'm in Mexico City, in the grocery store that is near my apartment, they have all this chilorio in little bags or um, pouches, cans. I've tried them all. And they're, what they're missing is balanced flavor and this browning step, which to me is everything. You can do the step in oil, or you can do the step in fresh rendered pork lard, which is what I'm gonna do, which gives it absolutely the best flavor um, that you can even imagine. But you're gonna wanna use good lard if you're gonna do this, not the stuff that is like in those bricks in the grocery store, something from a butcher's shop. I've got this over about a medium high heat. And I'm gonna put all of our shredded, this is just coarsely shredded, not finely shredded. Put all the pork that's coarsely shredded in here. And I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute so it starts to brown underneath. And then I'll start to stir it. This won't take more than about two and a half, three minutes or so for this to brown nicely, but again, that browning is where you're going to get so much flavor. Okay, in goes the braising liquid, which is almost a sauce-like consistency here. But man, it's packed with flavor as well. All we want to do is let this reduce for a short period of time for everything to come together because it's already completely cooked but we don't want this to be runny in any way, but it shouldn't take very long at all. I'm gonna turn the fire off now because you can see how beautiful this is and how it's come together. There's so much flavor in this particular product that I will say it needs very little for when you're going to serve it. Maybe some salsa, some onions and cilantro in a very classic Mexican taqueria way. So on each one of these tortillas, I'm gonna put a nice spoonful of the chilorio. I'm doing this in Mexican style. These are not gonna be over full because there's so much flavor here. So you don't wanna do too much on that. And then for some heat, this arbol roasted tomatillo salsa, I think is just perfect in here, but it's really just going to add that bright, acidic, wonderful contrast. A little bit of onions and cilantro over the top of it. And there you've got a regional classic. This is Chilorio from the state of Sinaloa.